Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant good morning to you. Wherever you are right now, whatever you're up to today, I hope you're having an exceptionally good day. I'm Pastor Bill Johnson of the First United Methodist Church in Orange, California. And this is We Are the Church. Well, good friends, I'm going to be reading from the book of the Le the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, chapter 12. I'm going to be reading from verse 5 down to verse 6. The author says, uh, "Do not forget the exhortation from scripture that addresses you as children. My child, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord or lose heart when you are punished by him, for the Lord disciplines those whom he loves and chastens every child." whom he accepts. He would go on to say, this author, in just a couple more verses, that at the time, no discipline seems pleasant, but rather painful. But later on, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace. The point he is making is that Christianity is hard going sometimes in this world. Many times we fall into a little uh, trap of thinking that if I can just trust God with everything and not spend so much time focused on it, I won't, I won't dwell on my shortcomings or my misgivings as a Christian. We can let ourselves off the hook pretty easily as Christian human beings. In fact, in every walk of life, we can tend to let ourselves off the hook pretty easily. I don't count that extra cookie I ate at dessert. Uh, I'll make up for it tomorrow. I, I won't... Uh, blame myself or beat myself up for not getting to that weed patch in the backyard today. I'll get to it tomorrow. Oftentimes when I'm riding with a, a group of friends in a bicycle ride and we're just going along and having a good conversation, there's a big hill that comes and somebody will say, why don't we turn left here and go around the hill instead of climbing up the big hill? We know that if we do the big hill climb or if we get to that weed patch, we'll sleep much better uh, afterward or we'll enjoy ourselves or we'll be much more fruitfully rewarded, we'll be stronger in every way if we just press through and endure the trials. The author of Hebrews uh, was on to something when he said, uh, do not neglect the discipline of the Lord, because it's out of love that God brings this discipline to our life. Now, discipline does not necessarily mean punishment. It simply means bringing us into alignment with the heart and the will of God, whom we know through the Holy Spirit and through the scriptures and through the witness of Christ himself. And so we are to take heart and to keep our focus and to stay disciplined. One of the best ways we can stay disciplined is by having a, a person with us that we can call a wingman, somebody who can watch over us in love, who can check in with us, who can be like a coach to us at times, who can speak the truth in love. Now, I may not be in a mood to hear the truth when you speak it, but if you're speaking the truth in love, I will receive it and I will accept it and I'll pray about it. When the Methodist movement took off like a rocket in uh, England in the 18th and 19th century, it took off because people were willing to get down in the mud a little bit and to work with one another and to watch one another. It wasn't because of the great preaching of John Wesley, but it was because of the care that they took to watch over one another. And we'll talk more and more about the form that that takes. But this week we're focusing on the issue of accountability. And for Christians, it's simply uh, means being accountable to those vows that we made when we were first baptized. And so we'll be looking at some of those vows as the week unfolds as well. We want to hold each other accountable for living like Christians in the world. And, and that is the way that God will make us a good witness to the world. We need each other to do that. Now, I want to point out one more little trap that we tend to make for ourselves. It's a kind of false truth uh, that we uh, use to lull ourselves into sleep. It kind of goes like this. I'm a Christian. We're, we're all Christians. We're about to have a meeting at the church, uh, some kind of a conference to talk about something. 
And Christians always do what is holy. Therefore, whatever we talk about when we get to church is holy conferencing. This is where discipline comes in. We need you. We need me. We need one another to keep focused on God when we gather for holy conferencing. Holy conferencing isn't getting together and because we call ourselves Christians say that it's okay to talk about the angels or the mighty ducks or the or the you know the weather or whatever else. What we're talking about now in holy conferencing in Christian accountability is getting very granular about our faith in Christ. It doesn't have to be this way all week long, but at least once a week. Sometime between the Sundays, we should gather. We ought to gather together in smaller groups of three, five, seven, ten people and talk about our faith in a very focused and a disciplined way. This is what Holy Conference is really about. We're going to continue to unpack it as we go along this week. Right, right now, why don't we have a prayer? God, we thank you that your discipline comes to us in many forms, but it often comes through the friendship and the love of the people we know in your church. Thank you for each of them, oh God. We praise you that through their insights, our blind spots are revealed and you continue to discipline us. May we receive your discipline, especially when it's on the lips of our friends. And we pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, have a great Tuesday today. Take care of yourselves wherever you're uh, going, whatever you're up to. And remember to wash your hands. Remember to read a psalm. And remember to tell somebody that you love them. I will talk to you soon.